I'm not sure exactly how to ask the question, so I'm very new to the course. But when I sat down today, I've been here before. Will you address, if we're in this continuum, and we're in this constant eternity, but yet we're an illusion on the stage, I get these all the time. So can you address that? Uh, the feeling that you've been here before. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, what the Course says about that, you know, what, whether you want to call it reincarnation or not, because we're never really in bodies, which is why the Course says that reincarnation is impossible. Uh, when it says that, it doesn't mean that we don't keep coming back over and over again. We do. It's just that the Course wanted to emphasize that we're not actually in bodies, that the body itself is a projection of the mind, just like everything else is a projection of the mind. But in that same section, the Course says, what needs to be recognized is that birth was not the beginning and death is not the end. You know, so there is that continuum. It does keep going uh, on and on and on. And that uh, phrase from that Choose Once Again section that says, trials are but lessons presented once again. So the way you made a faulty choice before, now you can make a better one. You must escape all the pain that your previous decision brought to you. Well, that's not just true in this lifetime, that, that trial will be presented many times. Uh, it's also true from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. Uh, for example, in our final lifetime, uh, you know, I haven't made any secret about the fact that uh, Cindy is Arden, you know, and uh, I'll be person in that final lifetime. Now, you do end up together, but if you look in disappearance, you notice that it's, it's a little bit later on in life that we end up together. And uh, they mentioned in the book that they were each married earlier in that lifetime. Well, it turns out that in that next lifetime, and you'll see this in the third book, uh, yeah, I am married earlier, and uh, even though I'm a woman, the man that I'm married to in that lifetime is my wife, Karen, my first wife from this lifetime. And uh, Cindy is married. And, uh, you know, before we meet, and, uh, you know, she's the man this time. And the woman that she's married to is her first husband, Steve, from this lifetime. You know, so trials really are lessons presented once again. And, uh, you know, the question is, and I don't feel like I have a lot left to forgive with Karen. And I don't think that Cindy has a lot left uh, to forgive with Steve. We're talking about some really big lifetime lessons because when someone like Jesus or Buddha comes back for the final time, they usually have one big lesson that they want to teach and learn. Obviously, with Jesus, it was overcoming death. You know, so it's not like Jesus had a lot to learn when he came back for his final lifetime. He already knew pretty much everything that he had to know uh, in order to be enlightened. When they talk about him teaching in the temples when he was 12 years old, that was true. And the other rabbis addressed him as rabbi. He's 12 years old, and they're calling him rabbi, and that's about the biggest compliment that a rabbi can give to another rabbi because it means teacher. You know, so it's like, uh, he already knew pretty much everything he had to know. And he went traveling all over the world. He had uh, an interesting time, a good time. Much like David and I get to do, we get to travel all over the world and, and uh, have an interesting time and share ideas with people. And uh, the thing is, he did have that one big lesson. And Arden and Percy each have a couple of big lessons that they teach in that final lifetime. But uh, for all intents and purposes, we're learning pretty much everything we have to know right now. And it's not like we're going to have to learn it over again. And that should be encouraging to people because everything that you learn in this lifetime will stay with you. Uh, it goes right into the unconscious mind and it's always there. You can't lose it. You can't lose the things that you learn in this lifetime. You know, they're always with you. That's why uh, Mozart, you know, he could uh, play the piano when he was six. He could start to write symphonies when he was nine because he had already done that before. And it's not like he was doing it for the first time. And that knowledge and that memory stays in your mind even if you don't remember the specifics of it. So you study A Course in Miracles in this lifetime. Uh, maybe you come back one more time. Maybe you don't. I'm not saying that you have to. But if you do, maybe you come back one more time and you're 25 years old and you go to this meeting and these people are studying this thing called the Course in Miracles, and they're all saying, you know, what the hell does this mean? You know, it's kind of like a, you know, a strange thing to them. And you pick it up and you start reading it, and it makes sense to you. 
and you're able to tell them what it means, well, that's because you already studied it in this lifetime. So uh, that continuum is there. That continuum is definitely there. And uh, you keep learning, and you retain everything that you learn. And because of the nature of this path, and the time-saving feature of the miracle, the only difference is you get through the rest of it amazingly quick. You know, you're talking about undoing thousands and thousands of lifetimes in just one or two lifetimes. And that may seem like a long time to some people, oh, a whole lifetime. But in the overall scheme of things, it's really nothing. And uh, that continuum can be used to our advantage because it allows us to learn in such a way that we can get through the rest of it really quickly. Uh, and that's a good question, but the answer is no. Uh, Jesus was not Buddha's uh, last lifetime. Uh, some people didn't like the fact that Arden Persa said that Buddha came back one more time after that lifetime. But he did, but most people, uh, they wouldn't recognize him because he wasn't a famous person. And there are a lot of uh, people who become enlightened and people don't know about it. You know, they're not famous. Uh, they're not world leaders. They're not uh, the kind of people that go out there and speak a lot to people. You know, I, I always said that, that if I was in life, no one tell anybody. You saw what they did to Jesus. <laughs> you know? So, uh, you know, a lot of times there are enlightened people walking around. You may even meet a couple, and you might, you might not necessarily know. You know, if they're enlightened, that's cool. And, uh, Buddha did come back one more time. He taught this pretty much the same lesson that Jesus did. You know, he overcame death and taught that uh, to people. And uh, that will be in one of the books. You know, not the third one, but probably the fourth one. And uh, it was Jesus' final lifetime. The Course teaches that Jesus was the first one to complete his part perfectly. And I know some people won't like that idea either. But you know, a lot of people believe that uh, the Dalai Lama is the reincarnation of Buddha. Uh, I don't think it's true. Some people don't like me for saying that. But uh, the truth is, once you become enlightened, you're out of here. You never come back. Not really. And uh, that's why I mentioned that, uh, you know, that idea of being a, a bodhisattva, or I don't even you know how to pronounce it, but, you know, coming back to save the world, that's the Holy Spirit's job. It's not your job. The Holy Spirit wants you to go home. The Holy Spirit wants you to get out of here. Everybody kept coming back to save the world. Nobody would ever leave. You know, so eventually the population of uh, humans will start to go down instead of up. It's like uh, when I saw that Canadian starship, uh, Arden Person mentioned there aren't that many of them left. And I said, why? I said, well, you know, they become enlightened and they're out of here. So eventually the population starts going down instead of uh, people who come alive and they never come back again. And if they do appear to come back again, that's okay, but it's not really them. So that's why Arden at first I had to use that incredible uh, quote from the Course right at the beginning of the disappearance of the universe. I had no idea what it meant at the time. You know, it, it says, there are those who have reached God directly, retaining no trace of worldly limits, and remembering their own identity perfectly. These might be called the teachers of teachers because, although they are no longer visible, their image can yet be called upon. And they will appear when and where it is helpful for them to do so. Uh, it's possible for the image of someone to be called upon, and that's what art and person really are. Yes, they show up as bodies, but they're really the Holy Spirit. You know, just like the voice of Jesus in the Course of Miracles is really the Holy Spirit showing up as the voice for Jesus. Arden and Persia are really the Holy Spirit showing up as Arden and Persia. The Holy Spirit will show up for you in whatever way is best for you. And you know, their image can yet be called upon. And they will appear when and where it is helpful for them to do so.